This video covers the steps it will take to uh, set up an MLA style research paper. It's following along with project 3 out of the textbook on page 218. I'm going to go through the steps just like you will when you do your project. Okay, the first thing it says is to open the Atanercept essay. Now this is in your student data files. Uh, you can get it through Blackboard, download it, save it to the machine you're working on, and then open it. And it gives you a name to change the file to. So we're going to do that. It says file. I'm going to save as. I'm going to put it in a location. Um, browse. I'm going to put it on the desktop. And the name that it says to give it is C7 for Chapter 7 dash project. 3 dash Tannercept SA dash, and then they want you to put your name in there. So I save the document. Okay, the next step is to select the entire document and change the font, line, and paragraph spacing and paragraph indents to conform to MLA guidelines. Okay, so I'm going to select the entire document. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to Times New Roman for the font. I'm going to change it to 12 point. Okay, paragraph the line and paragraph spacing for a research paper, it's always going to be double spaced. So I'm going to put the entire document to be double spaced. And then I've got another step here. I need to remove the space after a paragraph. Okay, and then the final thing that we were asked to do is set up the indents properly. Well, you'll notice I have my rulers turned on. If you don't have your rulers turned on, Go to the View tab, click on Ruler. All right. With the entire document selected again, so I'm going to go back here and select all. I'm going to grab this little top triangle on the ruler and I'm going to move it over to a half inch. Okay. Now you'll notice that it messed up the title though, so I, I'm going to take it off the title. But the rest of the document has now a half inch indent. And if I start a new paragraph here at the end, it'll also be indented a half inch, as you can see right there. Okay, let's go on to the next step here. Okay, another thing is uh, the book cautions you to turn on the show hide button so you'll see the non printing characters. And I'm going to go to the Reference tab and make sure that this is set to MLA for the style since we're going to be working on a, a research paper. Okay. It says to insert your name, your instructor's name, the title of the course, and the current date at the top of the first page by MLA guidelines. And it gives you a table where those guidelines are at. Well, I've hit enter once on the title, so I get an extra space there, an extra line. I'm going to take it back, put it on the left margin, okay, I'm going to type my name. Press enter. Okay, the second thing is supposed to be in there is the instructor's name. So I'll put my name again here. Then the next thing that we're going to put in here is the course. And the final thing is the date. And the format the date needs to be in is this. Make sure the date's in that format, because any other format that you use will be wrong for it. Okay, 
The next step is step uh, five. It says add page numbering one space after your last name and the right margin in the header and format the header text to the same font and size as the rest of the document. So there's a couple ways to get into the header. You can either go to the insert tab and click on header and that'll open up the header but the easiest way to do it and then just click edit header the easiest way to do it is if I double click at the top of the page that opens the header if I double click back in the body that closes it okay I'm going to double click now the textbook example told you to tab twice which would take you over to the uh, right hand margin I'm going to tell you an easier way I'm going to do that that takes me to the right hand margin I'm going to type my last name put one space and then I'm going to go to the insert tab and I'm going to look for page number and I'm going to go to current location and select plain number now what I've just done is I've put a number in there that will advance every time a new page is created. So the last thing we have to do to it is make it times new enrollment and 12 point. So I'm going to select it, make it times new enrollment and 12 point. Okay, we're done in the header, so I'm going to get out of it and I'm going to click on save. Okay, the next step, <coughs> excuse me, the next step, step six, says to edit the existing citations in the fo as follows. I'm going to go find this Bradley and Dismule citation, and it says to change the second author's first name from Marie to Mary. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the citation, edit the source, change the name Marie. To Mary. I'm going to click OK and then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to change page 215 to page 225. So to do that I have to edit the citation and I'm going to make that 225. So that one's taken care of. Then it says to change the page from 61 to 65 for the Hashkiss and Laxer citation. All right, sometimes things are a lot easier to find if we use the tools that are built into Word. So I'm going to click on Find, and I'm going to just type in Hashkeys. And it says that there's one result in the document, and it happens to be exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to change this, the 61 to 65 in it. Okay. Next thing it says for us to do is position the insertion point at the end of the quotation that reads, the etanercept injection is used to reduce signs and symptoms of, of active arthritis. This medicine may also slow the progression of damage to the body from active arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. So what I'm going to do to search for where that is located at, I'm going to type in here rheumatoid and arthritis. Okay. And so this was the one we want, the first one. And it says to insert a citation after it. So I'm going to put one space and then click on the References tab. Insert citation. Okay. The citation that we're going to insert here doesn't have a source for it yet. So I'm going to start with add new source. Okay. If you look in step seven, the type of source is a document from a website. So I'm going to scroll down this list until I find a document from a website. The author is Jarvis.
B. And it's really important that you use a semicolon there because if you put a colon in, you're going to mess up the way this uh, citation looks when it's in the paper. And it falls D. Okay. The name of the web page is a Tannercept, a review of its use in rheumatoid arthritis. And the name of the website is PubMed U.S. National Library of Medicine. The year is 1999. The month is June. The year accessed is 2015. The month accessed is March. The day accessed is 15. And the medium is web. So I'm going to click OK. And now I've got a Jarvis and Falls citation in there. Uh, it really should have probably been on the inside the quotation mark in the period, but I'm not going to count off since I'm messing it up here. But one thing we do have to change about this is we have to put a paragraph number. So I'm going to click on this citation. I'm going to edit the citation. And we put a paragraph number in the same place we put a page number in, but we do it with this first, P-A-R, and then space, and then one four. Okay, so now that citation is correct. And then we're going to use the same source for another citation. And it's going to be at the end of a sentence that says, this is from step eight, when intercept is administered alone or in combination with methotrexate in patients with refractory rheumatoid arthritis, significant reductions in disease activity occur within two weeks and are sustained for at least six months. So I'm going to type in here at least six months and find found it for me. So I'm going to insert another citation here. I'm going to go down and pick the Jarvis and Falls citation. Now one more step to do. We have to put a paragraph number on here again. So I'm going to edit the citation. And this citation is paragraph 20. So P-A-R 20. Okay, that takes us through step eight. Now step nine says to position the insertion point at the end of the sentence that reads, missed doses will mean that the TNF protein is no longer being effectively controlled and inflammation, pain, and disease progression will quickly return within a month from stopping treatment. So I'm going to put stopping treatment in here. Okay, I'm going to put my cursor before the period, type a space, and we're going to add another source in this case. So the source, I'm going to insert citation, add new source. Okay, this one is again a document from a website. We're going to leave the author blank. The name of the web page is Medication Guide. And then Embril, and then in parentheses, a Tanner set. Okay, the name of the website is MUNEX Corporation. The year is 2011. 
the month is December. The year access is 2015. The month accessed is March. The day access is 25 and the medium is web. So I'm going to click OK. And then we've got one more thing to do with this one. We have to also put a paragraph number in here. So I'm going to edit the citation. And the textbook says that we're going to be referencing paragraph 12. So PAR period space 12. All right. Now I'm at step 10. And step 10 says to create a work and format a works cited page on a separate page at the end of the document. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to take off the indent on that last paragraph mark that's on the page. If you don't have a last paragraph mark that's indented, don't worry about it. Now I'm going to insert a page break. Don't use the enter key to get down to a new page. Use the insert page break function. Okay, now to create a works cited page, Word will automatically pick up the information from all those sources that we put in there. So I'm going to go back to the References tab. I'm going to use the Bibliography drop-down. I'm going to go down and select Works Cited. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the text. I'm going to make it Times New Roman. I'm going to make it 12 point. I'm going to take off the spacing after the paragraph. Well, I'm going to make it double spaced, and then I'm going to take off the spacing after the paragraph. Okay, we've only got a couple of things that are messed up. Everything is supposed to be black, and nothing's supposed to be bold. So I'm going to make that unbold, and I'm going to make the font black, and then I'm going to center it because it's a title. I'm going to save my work. And that pretty much takes care of the whole process. So your paper should look pretty much exactly like what I've got here when you're done with it. And uh, I hope this helps some. There's always a lot of confusion about this, and this is always the hardest assignment for me to grade. So I'm trying to make this easier on you guys and me too.